It's May the 16th, 1940, two hours before sunrise. 13 German tanks from the 8th Panzer Regiment are taking their positions. Partially obscuring the Panzers behind toppled walls and collapsed buildings is central to the Nazi plan, and now the trap is nearly set. From their vantage points, battle-hardened commanders will have clear views of the road leading into the beleaguered northern French town of Ston, just a few kilometers south of the Belgian border. Their main guns loaded with high-velocity armor-piercing shells. For German crews, it's only a matter of time before the French tanks lumber into view and they can get on with the turkey shoot. Crumbling under the Nazi juggernaut, France's future is bleak. Hopelessly outnumbered, armored units have done little to halt the Wehrmacht's relentless advance. But in Ston, the roles are about to be reversed. Hundreds of yards away, a sharp B-1 bis heavy tank from the 1st Company, 41st Tank Battalion, appears around the bend. In the commander's seat is 34-year-old Captain Pierre Biot, son of French 1st Army General Gaston Biot. Nicknamed Eure after a river in Normandy, the sharp B-1 bis is a massive 30-ton brute. Featuring thick, heavily sloped armor, tank and crew are nearly impervious to most German guns unless fired from close range. And the French tank has another big advantage. It has two guns to the Panzer's one. The first, a 75mm tank killer in the hull. The second, a 47mm cannon in the small turret operated by the commander himself, also capable of punching holes in the lightly armored Panzers. Spying the German tanks through his sight, Biot springs into action. Barking commands, the 75's loader slams around into the breach as the gunner lines up the crosshairs at a panzer downrange. In the turret, Biot follows suit. Now, cannons loaded, orders to fire slice through the morning air in French and German. Deafening cracks and blinding muzzle flashes erupt from both sides. Anti-tank rounds traveling faster than the speed of sound whistle past one another towards targets of steel. Then, in the chaos, the tanks nearest to and farthest from the Shah B-1 take direct hits and burst into flames. Taking out the first and last vehicles in a formation is a time-tested tactic, and as a result, the 11 remaining Panzers are now hemmed in. Shocked at their comrades' fate, German gunners fire ceaselessly, but though the Panzer IV 75mm guns are powerful enough to penetrate the Shah's armor at close range, they're too far away. Closing the distance is an option, but doing so will put them in even more danger, and for the Panzer III's, things are even worse. With either 37 or 50mm main guns, they're impotent from almost any distance against the Shah's 60mm frontal armor. The Germans realize that they may as well be armed with slingshots. Despite the dire situation, dozens of rounds slam into the Shah's hull and turret, but to the Germans' consternation, they do little damage. Some deform the armor plating, others shear off bits of steel, but the rounds are deflecting off the tank and not penetrating into it like they're supposed to. Inside the already hot and smoke-filled Shah, the impacting shells are making a deafening commotion, like the tank has been set upon by sledgehammer-wielding guerrillas. Thankfully, it's nothing Biot and crew can't handle. In fact, they're just hitting their stride. Load, aim, fire. Load, aim, fire. The Shah's twin cannons thunder away and the German tanks keep going up in flames. Columns of fire and oily smoke pour from the stricken panzer's hatches as the rounds inside cook off. Checking for more targets but finding none, Biot realizes with a start that they've taken out every German tank, all 13 of them. Not one to bask in recent successes, he orders the driver to turn the tank towards the town to join the fighting there. By the end of the day, Biot and his crew and their now famous Shah B-1 bis have taken out even more German tanks and a number of artillery pieces. Other Shahs have arrived too, and though German forces remain in the area, they lack anything powerful enough to dispatch the Gallic steel beasts, and by nightfall, Ston is back in French control. In the following days, Ston changed hands nearly 20 times before eventually falling to the Nazis. The Shah's legendary ability to take and dish out punishment did serious damage to the confidence of the German tankers. The 10th Panzer Division War Diary recorded that they had encountered 60-ton super-heavy tanks, an over-exaggeration, 
but an indication of the fear the Shah B-1 struck into the invaders. Many Shahs were captured and used by the Germans when Germany still had nearly four dozen of them in service. Biot was taken prisoner after France fell, but this French hero could not be contained and escaped the following year. Awarded the Légion d'honneur, he lived a long and active career and died on June the 29th, 1992. Most of our viewers aren't yet subscribers. If that's you, please subscribe and support the channel. Thank you.